Dear Lord God, Father, thank you for letting us come together in fellowship to praise your name and to worship you. Lord, thank you for all that you've done, all that you will do, and all that you've done. Lord, thank you for sending your son to die on the cross for our sins. Lord, it is something that, that we can never truly repay, but we love. And that we will do our best, Lord, to, do, to bring people to you. Lord, thank you always for hearing our prayers, for being with us even in our toughest moments. It's in your holy name we pray, amen. You cannot Google God to save you. This may look familiar. This evening, as Austin Todd was walking in the foyer, I noticed this was on his shirt. So he let me take a picture of his shirt, and here we have it. I had a reason for this, and I appreciate Austin letting me do that. And by the way, he's doing the, uh, the closing prayer, so you'll get to see it. That was not planned either. But uh, tonight we're beginning a focus in wisdom literature in our Wednesday night class. We're looking at Proverbs. And for tomorrow morning for our men's class in CIA, we're going through Ecclesiastes. So we're going to be looking at uh, the concept of Proverbs and Ecclesiastes. And so the concept of wisdom has been something I've been focusing on. And if you look at Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 7, it says, The beginning of wisdom is this, get wisdom. Well, how do we get wisdom today? Well, a lot of people Google it. They do. I was planning to talk about this. That's why I, I was amazed with Austin's shirt. See, because I, I like to sometimes look up what has happened on this day in history. And so I googled what happened on September 4th in history today. And just so happened that September 4th, 1998, Google was started. I kid you not. That's when Google started on September 4th, 1998. And it just so happens that September 3rd, 1998, I never looked up anything ever. <laughs> That's really how it was. Google has made it so easy for us to search for things. Search engines have made it possible. If you don't know something crazy, you can look it up. And I want you to look it up. September 4th, 1998, what happened? You'll see Google was started. But the idea of wisdom and where we gain wisdom, because of that, we are so much. This is we're why we're in the information age. And we're inundated with information, but sometimes it's hard to know whether it's True or not, sometimes you have to fact check the fact checkers and you have to fact check them as well. It's hard to know which, what is true. Jesus said, John 8, 32, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. The problem is if we can't access truth, we will be enslaved. We will not be set free. Jesus gives us access to it. And Solomon understood this. Because when he said the beginning of wisdom is this, get wisdom, he's saying find that search engine. Get wisdom. And whatever you get, get insight. Prize her highly and she will exalt you. She will honor you if you embrace her. She will place on your head a graceful garland. She will bestow on you a beautiful crown. We can receive this beautiful crown when we access wisdom. Well, now I'd like to turn to James, where James is often referred to as the Proverbs of the New Testament. And verse 5 says, If anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all generously and without reproach, and it will be given. But let him ask in faith with no doubting, for the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. There is so much doubt in this information age we are like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. What is right? What is wrong? Verse 7 says, For that person must not suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He's a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. 
Let the lowly brother boast in his exaltation and the rich in his humiliation, because like a flower of the grass he will pass away. For the sun rises with its scorching heat and withers the grass. Its flower falls and its beauty perishes, so also will the rich man fade away in the midst of his pursuits. But blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial, for when he has stood the test, he'll receive the crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him. Solomon said those who get wisdom get a crown. And what James in the... In, in this New Testament proverb has said is that we will receive a crown of life which God has promised to those who love him. But you cannot Google God to save you. We don't need Google. Because God spoke his word into existence and we just have to follow his word. And we, because of the access we have to the truth. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. We now have access to salvation through one name and one name only, not Google, Jesus. And so tonight we have an invitation. If you have accessed salvation through the name of Jesus, then you are a born again Christian. You've been born of water and the Spirit. So often, we as Christians, we, we, we access salvation through that plan, through the purpose, the plan of salvation. But so often, it's the remaining faithful that we begin to, to struggle with. And that's why the church, the moment sin is subtracted through the concept of confessing that Jesus is Lord, repenting, being baptized in his name, we understand that we are added to the body of Christ. And we as the body of Christ are here to encourage you, to help you. If we can assist you in any way to, to be an, a source of encouragement, pray that you'll come now while together we stand and as we sing.